Hey y'all. Well, we're revisiting the little headphone adapter box. And this was a popular little project that I did probably a couple of years ago. And the goal here is to be able to connect headphones up to something like an ST70 or some other kind of DIY amp or any kind of tube amp that doesn't have a headphone jack. And one of the things, and I've seen people just kind of, you know, they just put some dropping resistors to the headphone. I think a lot of tube amps, that's just what the headphone jacks do. And I think they're missing that a tube wants to see a reflected load through the output transformer on the plate of the output tubes. And while there is the whole thing, if you really lightly load the output tube, you get lower distortion. But then it doesn't sound like a tube amp and you're not hearing the character of the tubes or the tube amplifier because the distortion is so low, you're not getting that second order harmonic distortion that gives tube amps that warmth and sound that we all love. And with this box, it's got a couple of 50 watt 8 ohm resistors that get put across the speaker terminals to load the amplifier. And then it pulls the headphone signal off the positive side of that resistor and it comes through this 10K volume pot in series so you can adjust the volume level of the headphones. And the idea is that you would turn the volume all the way up, turn the amp all the way down, turn the amp on, put the headphones on, and then slowly turn up the volume on your amplifier so it's just a little louder than you would ever want to listen to it. And then you control the volume on the headphones from here. And by doing that, you can never like damage your hearing by turning something up too high. If you're only controlling the volume on this and at max volume, it's not too loud. You can never just blast your ears out with the headphones hooked up to the amplifier, which is another nice reason to have this thing. And I found this little combo jack that has the small 1/8 or something millimeter. I can't remember what it is, but you know what I'm talking about. There's a small size and then the quarter inch big guy. And so you get both of them on the front. And then you have this switch here that switches between putting the resistors in the circuit and driving the headphone jack or it just bypasses the box. And on the back, using these flush banana jacks, which we used on the SD70, and I really thought that turned out nice. I thought, hey, that'll work really good on this headphone box. It won't be all bulky on the back of it. And so on one side, you hook up the amplifier, you hook your speakers up on this side, and then when you're not gonna listen to headphones, you just flip the switch and it bypasses the box. So I will say, and I've got two of them here, I built one for myself and one for a customer. This is a great first DIY project. Really simple to wire up. I'll show you exactly where everything goes. We'll post the schematic, which is super simple. The schematic's already on my website under the headphone box project, so you can go look at that. And you can download it, or you can screenshot the video. I'll show it right here. And you can see how simple the schematic is. So yeah, let's build this little headphone adapter box. Okay, so I got all the holes drilled on the drill press, and this was my box. The other one turned out fine. I screwed up and drilled the hole on the top of this too big. But again, this is gonna be my box. The one that I did for the customer turned out perfect. So the last things that I need to do, and I was gonna show you on this one, here's the volume control. And most volume controls have some sort of a little tab 
or something like that that locates it to keep it from rotating. And this one's got this little pin right there. I think you can see it. And what I normally do is, like on the inside of the box here, I will take the volume control, put it the way I'm going to orient it, and then hold it and twist it like that. And it puts a little mark right there where you're going to drill the hole for the locator pin. So then I can come in with my center punch and mark the hole like that. And we're ready to drill that hole there. And we'll have the locator pin hole drilled through the chassis. And then I do the same thing on the power switch. Let me find that guy. Here we go. And it has a washer that has a little locator pin on it. And so I try to put the locator pin on the switch where you're not going to see it. The hole in the chassis, which would be down here on the bottom, or would be like in the back if the switch was on the top. And you put it through the hole and you just go like, like that. And it makes a little mark here where the locator hole for that switch is going to be. And boom, mark that. So drill that hole and then drill this hole and we'll have the fab work done. So here's the one that I'm building for a customer. And I went ahead and installed all the parts in it or most of the parts. You don't want to put the positive speaker jacks in yet. Put the negative ones in and then install the switch, put both the resistors in, and then the combo jack is in the front. And you can see how nice this has turned out. And there's our little volume knob. And on the sides you can see the two bolts there for the Holding the resistor in place. So the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be running a solid piece of 18 gauge wire as this ground bus and it's going to go from this resistor terminal. It's going to pick up each one of these speaker jacks and then it's going to connect to that resistor terminal. So let me get that installed and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I think it'll make sense now the way I laid this out. And I learned from experience on the other one that putting the negative jacks at the top make this thing easier to wire up. So you just run a piece of 18 gauge wire and you go from this resistor terminal go to this jack, that jack, that jack, that jack, and then this end of this other resistor. And then you run a, another piece of wire from here over to this terminal. Comes over here, go to this terminal, and this terminal on our little combo jack. And if you're using a different jack, this is the sleeve, or the closest one. It's this one here. That's the ground. So you just hook that up and run it over here and ground it to the speaker jacks and to that end of that resistor. So then, got the positive terminals up here. You run one of them over to the center of the switch, like that. And then you run the other one to the center of the switch over there. So this is the input side here. It goes, like I said, to the center of the switch. Now if you have the switch flipped down, like you switch it down like that, that's going to be for the headphones. And 
What that does is it runs the speaker positive from, you see there, the bottom terminal of the switch comes over here to this side of this resistor. And the same thing over here goes from here to that side of that resistor. And so what that's doing, when you switch it to headphone mode, you're putting this 8 ohm 50 watt resistor across the speaker terminals. And that puts the 8 ohm load on the output of the tube amp, which is what it's expecting to see. And it will make the impedance on the output tube be in the right ohms load for the output tube so it will operate properly and sound like it would if it was hooked up to 8 ohm speakers. So then we pull another positive wire comes over here if there's a 100 ohm resistor soldered to the end of this wire and then heat shrink tubing goes over it and it connects to the potentiometer here and then we do the same thing with the wire on the other side it comes across here 100 ohm resistor and goes to that terminal on the potentiometer and see if you can kind of see here and you can see this one comes over to this side and then the lower one comes over here to this side. So now all we have to do is connect the wiper of this potentiometer. This is a 10K audio taper potentiometer. The center terminal is going to come over here. And this is the tip, which is the left, and that is the ring, which is the right. And so you can decide whichever you're going to do here. I'm going to make this the right and this the left so that when you're looking at the front of the thing, that's right and that's left, which is how amplifiers are normally wired. So, And I'll put a printed label on the bottom that explains what the terminals are. So if this is the right, that's the left, then this side over here, which is the lower one, is going to go to the ring. And then this one's going to go to these two tied together, which will be the tip. And then finally, you take these two other terminals of this switch that are unused right now, and they're just going to come over here, like there and there, to the output that goes to the speakers, so that when you flip the switch the other way, the signal comes in, just goes straight back out. And so it bypasses the headphone part of it. Now, if you were going to make this just a headphone-only adapter where you were going to hook speaker cables up to it and then have a headphone and you didn't care about switching it back and forth between headphones and speakers, you could leave off the switch and you wouldn't need these other jacks. And you could just wire these terminals up to these resistors and then the rest of the wiring would be the same. So let me finish it up and I'll show you what the last of this little wiring is. Again, this is a very simple little project and it's a great first project for someone to DIY. So let me finish up the wiring and I'll show you what that looks like and then I'll show you what the finished thing looks like with the bottom cover on it, the label and all that. Yay! So the last of the wiring here is we connect the wiper or the center terminal here on the pot and this is on the upper side it comes over here and connects to these two terminals here and here just run a piece of wire Let's see if you can see that this piece of wire going between here and there and then that wire comes across and comes over here to the center on the upper side. And then the lower one down here, it comes across like this. And then it connects to here and there. So you tie these two together and then it comes over here to the lower one. And then finally, you run this terminal to here 
in this terminal to here and that creates our bypass when you flip the switch to that you know in that position that's going to be bypassing the headphone jacks and it's going to go to the speaker so the amplifier will always have an 8 ohm load on the output so let me pop the bottom cover on it and stick the little feet on it and put a label on the bottom of it to label the jacks and we'll be done with this little project so here's the finished little box i think it turned out nice we've got the large and small headphone stereo jacks got the bypass or speakers headphones put a little label on the bottom that it's a eight ohm headphone box and then that these are the speaker terminals and these are the input terminals and put some little rubber feet on it and there we go and use these little flush mounted banana jacks and I think it turned out really nice and I thought this little knob kind of fit the theme so anyway wasn't any room to put my little skunky logo on it but that's okay it's just a little black box so anyway I think it's a good place to wrap up this little video well I think you'll agree that this is a really nice looking little project and it performs great it provides functionality of having a headphone connection to your tube amplifier while still providing the load that the tubes are looking to see so that it sounds good and I've listened to this for quite a while I've got a hi-fi man headphone set I think I can't remember which one it was it's about a $500 pair of headphones and I got some Sennheiser 300s and they both sound really nice with this little box listening on my 300B amp, which I'd never listened to it with headphones before. And so this is a fun little project. And again, you're just dipping your feet into DIY building stuff. This is a great first project. Even if you're not going to use it, you're going to just give it away to somebody or whatever you're going to do with it. It hones your skills and gives you some confidence in doing this sort of work yourself and it's just a fun little thing to build and it took me about a couple of afternoons to build both of these so it's not a real long project that you get all bogged down in and it takes a minimal set of tools you need some drill bits and a drill if you got a drill press great if you don't you don't really need one for this it's just yeah it's a great starting point into diy stereo gear so anyway Hope you've enjoyed these two videos. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks to all you Patreon supporters, you other folks that join the membership or subscribe. And just thanks again for all your support for Skunky Designs. And I hope you enjoyed this little short project segment. And until the next video, have a nice day.